So, our second speaker of the day is going to be Dr. Michelle Hu. And Michelle is going to be talking about the power of a positive mindset. As our keynote speaker, I have been following her for some time on Instagram. I love the work she's doing. Hi, Michelle. Hello. So, Michelle, are you ready to just wow? All that? <laughs> I love your energy. It's contagious. All right. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, I love that I'm going after Katarina because we, while we didn't talk about our presentations with each other, I really feel like I'm wrapping up and driving home some of the ideas and topics that she was talking about. Mayela, the Project Hearing, I want to thank you so much for having me here to close out this amazing week of the first Hearing Access and Inclusion Conference to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Mind you, Mariella has a full-time job and she somehow has overflowing energy to create this conference. It's a space for all of us, you and me, to share knowledge, learn about technology, be inspired and feel so empowered. I love that about you. Um, I, I wanna further acknowledge you, Mariella, for your drive, your creativity, your enthusiasm, and your ability to bring resources together in such a short amount of time. I'm honored to be part of this conference and I really, really hope to see this grow and continue as an annual event. With that said, let me get down to the reason why Mariella wanted me to speak today. With many of us, I know, having disabilities of the hearing kind, I wanna share with you a little bit about my hearing loss journey and how significant the power of a positive mindset has been. Um, ironically, today I got some stressful news about a family member, so I just want to apologize in advance. I'm a little bit um, frazzled, but it's absolutely perfect because I actually am using the tools that I'm going to be talking to you about today. For me, access to a positive mindset has given me the ability to change the way I experience life, my perspective, and how I choose to approach different situations. Access to a positive mindset has given me the ability to inspire and plant the seed for others so that they have the power to shift their mindset too. Here are my four keys to accessing a positive mindset and I hope that they will be of value to you. If you had told my mom 35 years ago that her daughter would grow up to become both a pediatric audiologist and a classically trained chef, she never would have believed you. To graduate high school and enroll in college didn't seem within any kind of grasp for me. This was because 35 years ago, my mom was sitting in the doctor's office, holding me as a young toddler in her lap, listening to them, them confirm that I had a hearing loss. Now, how could this have happened? My mom was thinking she had a normal pregnancy and delivery without concerns of any kind. We have no family history of hearing loss I was constantly singing at the top of my lungs. I was telling stories. I was asking why, you know, why do I have to brush my teeth? Why is the grass wet? Why do ducks float but fish swim? Why do trees change colors when it gets cold? I was curious about everything. And with that, I, I seem to be a typically developing an active toddler. So it was actually noticed by my preschool teacher who first, um, she told my mom, during the class story time, I, would, I wouldn't follow the story. I would actually wander off on my own with a book or I would go off to the pillow corner and sing to myself. So this was a little bit strange to her. This was a red flag and that's when she told my mom. My mom took me to an audiologist in Akron, Ohio and I was diagnosed with a mild hearing loss at the time. This explained why I appeared to be a normal hearing child. Because I heard most things, I followed directions pretty well, and I had developed fairly appropriate speech. This means basically I flew under the radar. But that day in the doctor's office is something else. My mom told, my, uh, the doctors told my mom that her daughter, me, would probably not go beyond a third grade reading level. Upon hearing this, my parents took off on a mission 
They wanted to find out the cause of my hearing loss and how they could fix their seemingly broken child. Um, they took me to several ENTs in Chicago, New York, Ohio, and they even tried acupuncture and terrible tasting herbal soups then uh, trying to cure me. My mom racked her brain. She was just thinking, you know, what has she done wrong? It wasn't her fault that I had hearing loss, but she felt like it was. She tells me this story about a time when I saw her crying one time and I asked her what was wrong. She said to me, I wish I could take your hearing loss, loss Michelle, for you so that you don't have to grow up with it. I wish I could take all of the burden. My profound toddler response <laughs> was this. It's okay, mama. Maybe this is the way God meant for me to be. That one comment changed my parents' mindset instantly. And my parents stopped looking for answers and they stopped trying to fix me. The diagnosis or the label of hearing loss, this was something that initially just devastated them. It now had lost power on my parents. Katarina uh, mentioned, don't let something take your power. My parents were letting that diagnosis of hearing loss take their power. Um, and in that instant, it was just gone. They realized that I was the same little girl with a big personality with or without that label of hearing loss. So the first key to accessing a positive mindset, acknowledge and accept what's so. When I was fit with my first pair of hearing aids, my parents treated them like glasses, shoes, or a jacket on a cold day. You don't leave the house without shoes or a jacket on, so I didn't start my day without my hearing aids. So this is funny because, because I didn't know there was an option to resist, I actually wore my hearing aids all day, every day, and I couldn't, be happy. I couldn't have been happier. I would recognize the birds chirping outside. I would uh, hear the bath water running. I would hear the garage door opening, and I even could hear my favorite pink and purple crayon bustling in my school box. Because I was so young, I think that I had an advantage um, because I only had a mild hearing loss. I never really had a hearing path to compare my new world of sound to. I didn't have um, something to regret and, oh, I wish it, you, it sounded like that. I remember it that way. I didn't have that. I've said this many, many times before, and I'll say it again, especially for the parents in our audience that are listening. Challenges, and your children will have them. Whatever they may be, will always, always be much harder on you as parents than they are on us as children as we grow up. As a kid, I was pretty creative and pretty confident when people would ask me, hey, what are those funny things on your ears? I would say they're radios for music, or sometimes I would say they're ear warmers in the wintertime. This, no, this was long before Bluetooth technology came into the picture. Most of, the, most of the time though, I kept it simple. I told them the truth. They were hearing aids and they helped me hear. I loved them and I wore them all day because I knew that they made the world sound brighter and better. Due to something called Pendred syndrome, my hearing loss is progressive. Each time I hit my head, my hearing loss got worse. This was either in the playground or just random accidents. My hearing would get um, worse and my hearing aids would get bigger. This happened to me in first grade, third grade, and fifth grade. By the time I was 10 years old in fifth grade, I had a profound hearing loss in both ears. Each time that happened, it was scary. But I adapted pretty well since my hearing aids um, could always be programmed louder or there was always a uh, stronger, more powerful hearing aid to, uh, to get. But during my senior year of college, I had another sudden drop in hearing. My hearing had been stable for so long that I got used to that. Because this time I was crippled. I was scared. I was completely lost. I didn't know what to do. I'd gotten used to things and I believed, okay, this is, this is how my hearing is going to be. It's, you know, it's all gone. And that was, I thought that was the bottom of it. 
I had plans. I was going to graduate. I was going to take on adventures around the world. I was going to get a high paying job. I was going to marry my current boyfriend and start a family. So life was throwing me a huge curveball. And I was anxious that none of this would happen, that I would never hear music again. I would never be able to sing. And I was scared I would never be able to hear someone say, I love you to me. I wanted to, I wanted, I was, I was nervous about those three words. How would I be able to feel what I felt when someone said that to me? I was so attached to the idea of how my life was supposed to go. I started feeling like a failure. I started feeling not good enough. I started feeling like a victim. I was crying in the lobby of the audiology clinic, waiting to get my hearing tested when my mom suggested, hmm, I think you'd make a good audiologist because you have firsthand experience with hearing loss and how to use hearing aids. Well, this suggestion floored me. I was like, what just happened? I had always wanted to be able to make a difference for people, but I wasn't sure which path to go down. I'd always wanted to be able to help others and as some kind of a healthcare setting, but I wasn't exactly which field to go. I can say today that pediatric audiology is the perfect setting for where who I am and what I've experienced in my life are truly optimized and exactly what my patients need. So what was initially a sad and scary, anxiety-ridden experience turned out to be a huge blessing in disguise. With the help of uh, intratympanic steroids, medicine through my eardrum, my hearing actually came back that time. But I had already let go of the perfect little life plan that I had and decided to become an audiologist. So my second key to accessing a positive mindset, surrender and let go of emotional attachments. It was during my third year of graduate school when I started to learn about cochlear implants. What are they? One night I was excitedly talking about it with my parents when my dad told me, you've been a cochlear implant candidate since you were young. And I'd never even heard the word cochlear implant before my class in school. I was so surprised because I, I like I said, I never thought that there was something beyond the next hearing aid for me. So this was just news to me like, oh my gosh, there's something, there's a window opening for me. Back then, when, I w when they first learned that I was a cochlear implant candidate, my parents, they chose not to move forward with it because they were, they were just unsure of the technology. They also felt it wasn't a necessity because I had always adapted and I was thriving academically. I was doing great. But we decided, hmm, maybe let's, let's undergo the pre-cochlear implant evaluations again. I did that and uh, I was told that I was a textbook candidate. Pretty cool. But now this time it was, okay, now you have to seriously think about, do you want to go through with it? Once you get a cochlear implant, you, you can't go back. Hearing aids, you can always try them out, try them on, take them off if you don't like them, make adjustments. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted device. It's in there for the long term. Surgery, anesthesia, blood, new technology, none of that scares me, um, but change did. Would I like it? Would I hate it? Was it a really good decision or was it a what's best for me decision that I might not like in the long run? I, I knew I already knew how to be assertive. I knew how to deal with my hearing loss with my own tools. I was comfortable. Do I want to change it up? I knew I needed to talk to more people who were cochlear implant recipients. But within minutes of talking to a few people, I could tell that they had access to an entirely different world of sound than I did. This is what motivated me. I imagined myself at Niagara Falls, listening to the water, just crashing powerfully. I watched horses in the pasture. I grew up in Ohio um, and I just imagined their playful whinnying, their hooves hitting the ground as they were cantering around. I also envisioned myself able to hear and identify different instruments in a symphony orchestra, my brother played violin. And I also imagined myself having conversations with girlfriends, either in a dark car or in the bathroom. We just chat so much. I was imagining that it was not stressful and that it was free flowing. While there are many risks 
that come with cochlear implantation, I chose to focus on the positives and the possibilities, and that's what allowed me to say yes. So the third key to accessing a positive mindset, envision what you want and envision how you'll feel when you're there. The weeks that followed my cochlear implantation, they were exciting and exhausting all at the same time, or my cochlear implant activation. It was as if the world had gone from black and white to color, bright, brilliant colors. I would look around and wonder as I discovered, you know, what's that sound? And I would go and find out what it was. It was just so much fun. My speech began to become more clear. I could hear myself better and um, because I could self-correct after hearing myself, I started picking up my feet properly off the floor. I used to constantly scrape it on the floor and I never knew this. So no wonder all of my friends, my teachers are like, Michelle, pick up your feet. I never knew why, because I, I thought I was quiet when I was trying to sneak into a room or walk down a hallway. I often found myself sitting outside in our yard, listening to crickets, squirrels, bees, and cicadas, they're so noisy. And I couldn't believe all the things that I had been missing, these little details. The, no, the, the world is so noisy. I imagine that in New York City. And I, I started calling things, oh, these are annoyingly awesome sounds. I can hear it, but I don't want to, um, but I get to. So that was such a treat. As speech sounds became more clear and it was easier for me to understand people, my confidence rose. I stopped avoiding birthday parties. I finally went to the movie theaters after avoiding them for 15 years. And I began to make my way to go to social gatherings. I had always been asked to go, but I would always just come up with an excuse of, no, I, I'm busy doing this, um, just to avoid feeling awkward in loud situations where I might get caught or um, I would maybe answer something incorrectly. That was always embarrassing for me. When I, when I realized one day, I, I can hear those. I, I don't even think twice of you know, going to that event or meeting with this person, I had a moment where, where I realized, oh my gosh, this is the world of sound that I've worked so hard practicing to get to. And it was such an opportunity. I don't think that I would ever have moved from Kent, Ohio, where I was born, across country to San Diego, California, where I am now, if I hadn't received my first cochlear implant because before that I just didn't have the confidence to feel safe. Um, I was nervous walking in dark car garages or at the mall or at school. It, what if somebody came running up from behind me? I wouldn't have hurt them. Or I was, I was also nervous about talking on the phone. Up until then I only talked on the phone with my mom. The only person that I could understand, I was comfortable with her voice, and I was comfortable with saying, huh, say that again, or say it a different way. I didn't even talk on the phone with my dad or my brother. And now I could, I, could I can talk to parents of a patient. I can talk to manufacturers. I can talk to Mayela. I still haven't met you in person, but I'm able to converse via Zoom. And that has added so much to my life. I was spreading my wings. <laughs> Five years ago, I had the opportunity to go to culinary school. This was a huge dream of mine, but it was the most difficult situation, listening situation that I chose to put myself into. There's tiled floors, the stainless steel equipment, appliances, big, huge ceiling fans, exhaust fans, there's walls of refrigerators humming, and there's constant uh, water running in the kitchen. This is an educational audiologist acoustic nightmare. And not to mention my chef, my professor, he had a heavy, heavy French accent. A few times I did get discouraged and tired of asking classmates to repeat themselves and uh, tell me what did he say or how am I supposed to do this or translate for me. But I endured. I endured because culinary school was one of my biggest dreams ever. Who was I to get in the way of my, achieving my own success? I told myself, suffering is optional. 
How can I shift my, shift my mindset to something positive? I told myself, I get to go to culinary school. I get to be here. I earned my spot to be here at this counter. You know, envisioning the future version of myself cooking and creating masterpieces like a Food Network star. That's, that's what was um, motivating me. So I dug deep and I said, you know, I looked at myself as a patient. This was kind of looking at myself in the mirror. What would a pediatric audiologist recommend for me? Now, I figured out I'm going to have my chef wear my FM or remote microphone instead of asking for repetition, because he, he seemed to say the same thing again and again, I asked for clarification instead. I took notes, I messed up, I spilled things, I burned myself, I, I lost fingertips, I broke dishes. However, I mastered sauces. I broke down poultry and seafood. I created menus, I plated and garnished beautiful dishes, and it was so worth it. It's an incredible feeling for me that I have now to be able to walk into a kitchen or a pantry and feel confident that I can create something from scratch that tastes delicious and gives to my, the people at my table. That's me giving a form of love to them. So the last key in ex to, to accessing a positive mindset, own it, enjoy it, and celebrate that you got there. I'm now a mom of two girls. I've got two dogs. I've got a culinary uh, degree. I'm a pediatric audiologist, and I also happen to be a mil military wife. While sometimes I do complain about so many things on my plate, these are honestly first world problems. A positive mindset has allowed me to keep my heart full and my head down when the going gets tough. It's allowed me to live my life the way I've always dreamed of. And the beauty of having a positive mindset is that you can continually recreate your life however you want it to be. You are the only one that thinks the way that you do. You are the only one that has the thoughts that you have and the past experiences that you have. These thoughts are the key to the way you act or react to what's happening in the world around you. The most difficult part of a positive mindset is that you have to constantly recreate it. When the going gets tough, it rains, it pours, but there's beauty in being able to have the ability to reset and move forward. When you find yourself in a rut, make a list of all the things that you have to do and take a deep breath Accept and acknowledge what needs to be done. And then surrender and let it go. Read away anything and everything that doesn't need to be in the big picture, in the big picture of your dream, read away. Recreate your mindset and envision everything that you want to do or to have. Allow yourself to feel what would life be like if your vision became a reality. Positive mindset allows us to turn problems into opportunities. Positive mindset allows us to create, to explore, enhance, and invent. Positive mindset allows you to enjoy where you are, what you do, and be who you truly are. A positive mindset allows you to persevere and continue on when things get tough. Most importantly, I feel a positive mindset allows me to connect with others, with you, because a positive mindset is undoubtedly contagious. Thank you for letting me be here with you today. Love it, love it, love it. So actually, Michelle, my battery just died. Hold on. Let me just okay. use a couple moments. That. Okay, so we are actually finished with some time left. Um, right now, we do not have any questions unless somebody wants to jump in into the Q&A. What you said is so, so powerful. I think that the experience where um, the story you shared with us 
about your mom uh, where you said maybe this is the way God wants you to be that was so powerful how old were you during that me <laughs> you were so like I wish I could have met you when you were three years old <laughs> but I'm, not, I'm happy I know you now um so well we have a question now and the question is are people born with a positive mindset can it be developed and how i absolutely believe that some people can be, are born with it um but even more so i think that it can be developed because the beauty is you can you recreate your life every day you can wake up on the wrong side of the bed and have a bad day or you can decide to have a good day about four things happened to me this morning before 8 a.m and and then there was just a rattlesnake in my yard and a couple of hours ago be with it use those four steps accept what's happening okay surrender to it it's not happening to you you're not a victim it's just happening in the world and what do you want to be i want to be positive today I want to have fun today. Okay, but you need to do those few steps before, before that. So absolutely, you could be born with a personality that's just bubbly, like Mariela, um, or, you know, whatever, but you can also take those steps. And that's why I'm here today. I wanted to give you something concrete, something that you can write down and utilize whenever somebody is judging you for your disability or um, maybe they're not able to write things down for you or slow down or speak again they have something on their own side when that happens you can leave it and you can still be who you want it to be so i think it's both i love that because um there are people even as, as adults you know, I don't know about you, but then there are people that you meet that are total buttheads. And people that are mean, and people that lack patience, and people that are just not understanding that they are interacting with someone with a disability, with a hearing disability, or just with a disability in general. So sometimes you just gotta let those people just, you have to protect your energy and understand mm -hmm. that they're just going to be mean people. Everybody. Or put yourself or put yourself in their shoes. Someone cuts you off in traffic and you want to go, oh, you're so mean. What if his wife is in labor and he's trying to get to the hospital? You have no idea. And they have no idea about yourself. So what something that I always say is meet them where they're at. Put yourself in their shoes. If you think they're having a crappy day, oh man, how can how can you make it better? Because you've had a crappy day too. What would you have liked somebody else to do when you were having a bad time? There's something that my mom always tells me, which is very powerful, which is just because someone doesn't give you a reason doesn't mean there is someone. Um, and sometimes people will be acting a certain way and you, don't, you have no idea why they're acting that way. We actually have time for one more quick question. And um, this is from Heidi, and they ask, so you mentioned the FM system. Did you buy your own, or did the university provide it? What issues did you have with the FM? And your story really resonated with me. So if you can answer that quickly, and then we'll close up. Um, when I was in elementary school, there was no IEP or, um, services for children with disabilities. So my mom, she had a great um, group of moms, but, well, one, one mom. She told my mom, hey, Michelle can talk. Keep on talking to her, you know, utilize the skills that she has. She's the one that told my mom about FM systems. My pediatric audiologist was Dr. Carol Flexer, um, who is absolutely phenomenal. She gave my mom the tools and knowledge of what to do. 
later as technology got better and politics policies got a little bit better, um, I did have the school, high school provide me with an FM system. And in college, I applied to the Office of Accessibility and they were, I'm sorry, the Bureau of Vocational Rehabilitation and they're there for that reason. They are there to provide um, either FM systems or they helped me with um, cart provider in school, helping with my books, accessing, you know, talking to different teachers for me. It's whatever vocation that you outline with the Bureau, they are there for support. And this is state funded. It's there for a reason. It, I feel like it's not spoken about enough, but there are resources from the state if you have a disability. Mariella can go on and on about this, I'm sure. You're still muted. There you go. Okay. So we've got one more question, but I really want us to stay on time. So what I would like to encourage everyone who has any additional questions for Michelle or for Katarina, we're going to be sharing their email addresses. I highly, highly encourage all of you to go ahead and sh uh, email them, contact them, send them a quick email, uh, hello, Instagram, follow them on Instagram. They are incredible and they are always sharing amazing content. 